Hi all, welcome to Digital Link Talk Show. Today we are living in this world of unprecedented change where anything that is getting innovated yesterday become obsolete tomorrow. So in such a dynamic world, how can a student remain competitive and can choose their passion? So to help them in this career, we came out with Digital Link Talk Show where we'll try to explore different facets of every technology and let people aware about it. What's going on in the industry of technology. So in order to get the ball rolling today, we have invited a very special woman from our organization, Natisha. She is not only the COO and her job role is not limited to just making the operation go smooth, but she is a very visionary, caring and the woman who make the things go on on the floors. So I'd like to welcome Natisha for the first. Hi Natisha. Hello Isha. How's your day? It's really good, thank you. I hope uh, we'll be able to make some really interesting topics, discussions today with you. I would like this interview to be really frank and very candid so that people feel really connected to this. So the first question that I would like to ask you is, do you feel excited when you wake up in the morning? Um, I have mixed feelings for this because I sometimes feel sad. I wake up and I realize that, you know, I'm in my country and that makes me excited. And the second thing is, I actually feel sad when I realize that, you know, my, my kids are growing up here and one day they have to reach their goals and then go to engineering college for their further education. And uh, then I realize that there are so many loopholes and gaps and uh, the standards are lacking. Uh, so these make me sad. But then I quickly realize that, you know, there's nothing to be sad about. We have to fix these things. And there are so many different ways that we can fix these things. And if we don't start now, by the time my kids go up to engineering, I'm not able to, I don't think we will be able to fix these things. And it also saddens me that there are so many other countries in the world which offer engineering uh, with much less infrastructure and much less um, educational population uh, but are successful and why did we fail in this aspect uh, that is something that uh, bothers me all the time cryptocurrency alexa flying cars driverless cars this all are gadgets when you feel really delighted when you talk about but this all gadgets are innovated mostly in the western country or specifically us India has not been able to contribute to any such type of things. And every year in India, 15 lakh engineer graduates are coming out. And if it's compared to US, it's just 1 lakh. What do you feel that after so many people, which is such a great diversity that we have, still we are not able to reach that height of what US has able to reach, though they have one fifth of the engineers with them. What do you think? Like, with all this gadget, will India will get? Uh, should should India need to feel scared about all these new technologies, or India should be proud of this and they will be able to do something in this? What do you think about this? Actually, this is a very good question, and one thing I would like to uh, say is why should even India develop when they are already developing it and we are very good at using it? So the second thing is. There are 15 lakh Indians who graduate every year, right? Engineer graduates. Engineers who graduate. But when an engineer graduates, it's not just the knowledge that is needed to develop a product. It is also the infrastructure that is needed. It is also the bucks that we need to conduct research, conduct innovation. And believe it or not, or you know, be coming to the reality, India is still in a stage where we don't have proper research equipment, we don't have proper uh, innovation centers for these engineers to come and explore and make a product. And one advantage is America evolves, upgrades and each and every time they have a modulation or a change or an upgrade in a software. But we also have to realize that we are directly jumping to the final stage of the technology rather than developing it from the beginning. So we are already using a technology that has been developed by another country and it took them 50 years to do that. But for us, we are directly jumping from no technology 
to uh, a technology I mean two technology in just one or two years of span like say for example Paytm. India is so popular in using cryptocurrency and all of that but um, are people in America using it as often as we do? No. We directly skipped all that phases of reformation and we are here right now uh, not wasting that time. So even if we have graduates or do not have graduates, there is nothing wrong borrowing technology from another country and we should not be sad about it or we should not be um, scared about it, we should embrace it. However, we should also work on getting the funds, we should also work on uh, creating infrastructure, we should also work on developing uh, in, you know, innovation centers, research and development centers so that we encourage these 15 lakh people to come to these uh, innovation centers so they can develop a product. So what I would like to say is in today's world everything is changing be it a people's lifestyle, be it a business, be it politics, everything has some kind of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But if you compare the education system of 1900 or today's education, you will see there is no way, there is nothing has changed in a very drastic way I would say. Still people do the classroom trainings and people follow this one way of communication in the classroom. Nobody is questioning what they are trying to say. Mm -hmm. So do you think what is the biggest ballast in case of education sector in India and how can this people who are just graduating every day, they can solve this problem. I think I have uh, shooted out a lot of questions to you, nested in one way, but would appreciate if you can just take a shot on this. Sure. So uh, pretty much there is one statement I would like to make, change is eminent and the only thing that is constant is change and I really like change and I enjoy it. But then as you said, the education system has not followed change at all, um, maybe a little bit of change but not too much to the extent that the world is changing. So our education system has to gradually change according to the world changes. Say for example, we our engineers um, are learning the same old thing that I have learned hmm. when I graduated. Correct. So if that is the case and there are so many new researchers going on as you said uh, and you know they are dealing with other countries so they are actually falling behind when it comes to education because they are not changing say for example we had notebooks and we write in the notebook and then uh, submit an assignment in a paper uh, and we take time to actually write but today's world we don't even need writing. Most of the western countries they actually type in uh, a computer and submit that electronically but how many Indian colleges do that? Very they don't. Point. So when they go to US or when they go to other countries to actually get their advanced education they actually kind of get stuck in the system because they don't understand these physical transformations mm -hmm. which surely shows that education system needs to be changed and it is not up to the par when it comes to the change that is happening globally. So Nitisha, I know that uh, you have been with the startups for last five years. So I'll give you just some hypothetical situation. For example, you need to hire somebody for your team who can run these operations very, very smooth and with the trending technologies. So you have two options. The first is you can hire a 24 years old lad from IIT, Kharagpur that the best in this India or a 27 year old young graduate who has already delivered successful innovative projects in the companies and so whom would you like to choose so what is the reason behind you for that can you just say yes I would hire the lateral I Why? mean the second person okay. that you have mentioned uh, not the IIT guy okay uh, I'll give you one basic reason I need performers and I don't have time to train. In a startup, you don't have time to train, you don't have enough resources to train, you don't have enough money and you know uh, time to spare to actually give that lad enough training they need. And the second thing is, I don't care about the brand. IIT is better than a normal uh, university because it has better infrastructure, better professors and better so many things. 
So, however, the second guy who did not have all these betterments is still able to perform or make a product for me. That means he has overcome all these infrastructural, in, you know, uh, physical uh, infrastructural needs. He has overcome that he did not need a professor to actually teach him what he do, uh, what what to do. He actually found out and researched by he, himself or herself to actually get there. So that means he has conducted more research than the IIT guy. And the third thing is, if he has already built something, that means he has passion towards it. So I would rather hire the second one who's pretty ready to develop a product for me rather than an IIT guy and get him trained for about six months or so. So, so I think uh, this is a very valid point. We can see that now that trend is very changing, not only in the startup, people don't value brand education and people value about the work, what they have done and what they have delivered before. So that is what today people are looking for and all the HRs are looking out for such candidate. So I'd request user to not just judge any people based upon the brand or education that they are doing, but based on the deliveries and the project that they have done before. So Natisha, do you like to give any message to our viewers, especially the people who are graduating recently and what should they do? What, how should they frame their career from now on? Any message from them? Actually, before you graduate, make sure that you have some practical exposure and make sure that you research and learn by yourself because we as Indians, we are so used to spe spoon, getting spoon fed. So stop the habit of getting spoon fed, be responsible for yourself and then try to do something so that when you walk into an interview, you have something to show. I or many other companies outside are more interested in what you've done rather than what you've studied or where you've been to. Uh, like you said, you know, I don't care if you are an IITN, but I would rather care if you have developed a product already by yourself without any formal uh, training by someone. So Natisha, thank you. Uh, the things you shared with us and whatever perception is, I think it's a very visionary way of thinking about the future India. And I would really appreciate thanking for joining us on the show. And I would like to give a message to our viewers that you can see the way today's startups are performing and it's very high time for you uh, to start getting upskill or choose whatever in which you can excel yourself. So just be a part of the revolution, hit the ground running with whatever you can and just be adaptable and try to make India proud of what it is today. So I hope to see you in the next episode with new technological themes. Till such time, be there with us.